iBeam for Asset Project Management. This session covers creating and submitting pay apps and is intended for our vendor users. First-time users are encouraged to watch the first-time user's video. The link is found down in the description of this video before viewing the session. The construction pay apps can only be created for executed contracts and approved change orders. They're created and submitted by the vendor. Your electronically signed lien waivers are pulled into the record after the first pay app. Within the description of this video, you'll also find a link to view a session on completing lien waivers. A soft copy of your invoice is to be attached. And then you can track your pay app record within iBeam. There's no need to call or email us for a status update because you'll have access to view this information. Here within the workflow, what we're going to focus on is the vendor create step and then what to do should the record be sent back to you for revision. Let's take a look in the system. To create a pay app against an executed contract, first be sure you're on the correct project tab. If the project tab is not already visible, simply click on this plus mark and type in a few characters of the project name. Be sure to select the project tab notated by the additional letters such as NC for new construction. To submit a pay app, on the left-hand side of the screen, you'll come down to Contracts and Payments, Committed Payments, then choose Construction Pay App. To verify that your contract has been executed, you can also come up to Commitments, Construction Contract, and check here for the status. Similarly, you can check that a change order has gone through by clicking on Change Management, Construction Change Order. In our example, there aren't any change orders in the system. So back to the Pay app. Once you highlight this process, written instructions can be accessed. Simply come up to Help, choose Construction Pay app Help, and a PDF will present itself. Once you open it, utilize the bookmark shown here to navigate to the section you'd like to review. For example, this document is 30 pages long, and should you later need to go in and revise the Pay app, you'd be able to skip directly down to that section by clicking it here in the bookmark and landing on page 10. To create a new record, simply click on New, like this. You'll notice that there are three sections to this record. We'll start with the upper form, which is similar to a cover page. To expand the upper form, you may simply click on the tab name, Pay Application. You'll notice that any fields that are gray, you cannot influence. Fields that are white, you're able to type into, and a field with a red asterisk is mandatory. The first thing we'll do is pull in your contract. So we'll click Select, and any executed contract specific to this project will appear here. To choose one, you can simply double click. Now you can see some additional information has populated, including the contract title, original contract amount, and revised contract amount should there have been any change orders. Next we'll want to pull in our certificate of insurance. This will have been provided to the admin in advance. Only certificates of insurance that do not expire within seven days will appear. In our example, the earliest expiration for any piece of this COI is in January. However, had my COI already expired, or if it were about ready to expire, I wouldn't be able to find it here to double-click and pull it into the Pay app. If that's the case, reach out to your contact, generally the admin, on the project team immediately to provide updated information for your COI. Now let's scroll down so we can see all of the contract information at once. Here we're able to see that the balance to complete is 82500 with a retainage of 10%. If the retainage needs to be adjusted, you can do so here. There's a section for any special payment instructions here. We'll continue to scroll down the page, and we'll find our pay app info. There's some additional information found for you here. It states that you will need to add specifics on dollar amounts you are requesting for each line using the Invoice Line tab below. We'll get to that in a bit. If any subtiers are to receive joint checks, please indicate the amount of the subtier joint check tab below. The tab amount requested in the invoice line tab should cover the total amount entered in the subtier joint check tab. 
If a joint check agreement needs to be entered into the system, be sure to notify your Avalon Bay project team associate prior to entering your first pay app. They'll set them up in the system. Then, as you enter your pay app, you can come here to the sub-tier joint check tab, click it to expand, and then come down to click add. From here you'll come down to sub-tier name, click select, choose your sub-tier out of the list, double click to pull them in, adjust the amount, and then select whether or not this is a final payment. Once you've entered this information, click OK. Now again, any field that has a red asterisk is mandatory. So we must enter our invoice number, and however you populate your invoice numbers today doesn't change. Next we enter the invoice date, and then whether this is the final payment for the contract. And no, it's not. We'll say this is our first pay app. Next it's asking if the invoice backup has been attached. This is a reminder to attach that invoice, so we can come up to Add Attachment, My Computer, and then Browse. From here you're able to look through your computer for the correct document. Simply double click and say OK. Here we can see that the file has been loaded successfully, and when I click Close, you'll notice the attachment link now has one attachment within it. And there's our invoice. So now we can click this box that the invoice has been attached. Should we forget to click the box, once you go to submit the record, you'll receive a warning and you won't be able to proceed until you perform this step. Next is a field to indicate when the work was through. Now the rest of the fields are gray, we're not able to influence them from here, but you'll notice that the pay app total is zero. Once we're done with the upper form, we'll move to the lower form and enter our pay app total. Let's move on to the lien waiver information. Again, there's some guidance for us, stating that a progress lien waiver is required on every pay app with the exception of the initial pay app. Please also indicate whether you have collected lien waivers for sub-tiers if applicable. Lien waivers are needed for any sub-tier that is performing or delivering work for the job with a value greater than 50000 Since we're entering this as our first pay app, we'll say that we do not have a progress lien waiver attached. We also don't have any sub-tiers attached at this time. When you're ready to do your second pay app or any future pay apps, progress lien waivers could be attached, in which case you would click Yes, come over here, and select your progress lien waiver by clicking this button. And they would be visible for you here. Again, as this is our first pay app, we wouldn't have any yet, but when we submit this one, it will trigger the system to create our first lien waiver. For more information on that process, visit the link found in the description below. Again, for our purposes here, we'll say NA. Let's continue to work down the form. You can see that the rest of these fields are gray, as they'll be auto-populated as the record works through its process. Here's where you'll be able to go in and see the check amount, check number, and the pay date once accounting has processed your payment. Now we're ready for the lower form to enter our individual line items. So we'll click directly on Line Items, and here we're ready to click Add to add line by line the payment we're submitting for. When your contract was executed, it created this schedule of values. Here within the schedule of values list, you're able to type in the amount you're requesting. You can see here on the form that the retainage that was found on the upper form earlier is reflected here within these line items. As we scroll over, we're able to see the percent complete, the amount requested, and then the 10% taken out for retainage to give us our total amount this period and the total completed to date. Further, there is a field where you're able to request retainage that was previously held here. Once you've completed this step, click OK. 
Using the split screen, you're able to freeze the left panes while scrolling on the right. This helps you to view more information at a time and know which cost code you're looking at. Again, once you've finished, click OK. Now we can see within our record, the total amount requested is $8,750, which is a total from here to this line. When we go back up to our pay application upper form and scroll up again, you'll now see the total amount requested, the retainage, and then the amount to be paid. Now you're ready to send the record forward. As a reminder, you may only have one open pay app record at a time. You are, however, able to save a draft and hold on to these drafts until the previous pay app has been paid. To do this, you would simply click on Save, and you can see the draft has been saved. However, you will not find this draft within your typical contract pay app log, which would be found here. Instead, you'll want to come up to Tasks and Drafts, Drafts, and there's your pay app. To get back into it, simply double click. Now back into the record, we're ready to choose our workflow action. So here we'll come up and click Submit. You'll notice it's now going to the superintendent for review. All that's left is to click Send. And your construction pay app has been submitted successfully. We'll click OK. To find more information about this record or to track it as it goes through the process, simply come down to Construction Pay App, click on that process, and you'll be able to see the log here to the right. We can see the status is sent for Superintendent Review. If you've submitted your pay app and Avalon Bay has any questions, they'll send it back for revision. In this instance, a task is created and you're notified by email. Let's take a look. So there's the email, construction pay app, sent to you for revision. When you click into the email, you can see some additional information. When you choose to click the link, it'll take you directly into the system where you can enter your credentials and log in. Don't forget, you can also find all of your open tasks here on the task page within iBeam. We're able to find that pay app here as well. I'll double click in. And notice there are some general comments here. We know there are comments based on the icon that has now appeared to the right. When I click into that link, I can see the notes. I either need to adjust my line item or the invoice. To add my own notes, I can just start typing. And say OK. Now before I can make any adjustments, I first need to accept this task. Before I accept the task, I'm not able to edit or influence anything else. So I'll click on Accept Task. I'll double click on the line item that I need to adjust. Adjust the amount. And click OK. Now I'm ready to send it forward again. So under Workflow Actions, I'll choose Resubmit and then Send. Here within the log, we can now see there's a status of Paid. To track or follow the record along, you can simply open the record by double-clicking, come to Task Details, and then click here to view Process Details. Here you can see that you created the record. Under Superintendent Review, you'd see the actual superintendent's name here and that they completed their task, when they approved it and when, whether or not it was sent back for revision, PM review, and so forth, all the way through to the pay step that happens after PeopleSoft Integration 2. Further, you're able to review the graphic of the workflow. Now that this pay app has been paid, we can scroll down and find the Check Information section.
Thank you for taking the time to watch this video on submitting a pay app. Don't forget, there are written instructions available in the help section of any process to guide you through the steps. If you require further assistance, reach out to your designated iBeam support team member.